It's Wednesday, the 20th of September. As oil companies increase the fuel price, BP unveils its new logo. More drug shame at Olympics. Chinese swimmer jumps into the pool and dissolves like an aspirin. 73% say Labour out of touch. Government respond, fuck off, we're listening to Genesis. Please welcome the one we've persuaded to stay, TV's Ian Lee. I've got new shoes on, they're very slippery. Did you miss me when I was away? He did. Did you hang my picture on your wall, sir? You cheeky monkey. My friends, has there been a great big Ian Lee-shaped hole in your life this summer? We all slumped at home watching Big Brother, just wishing you could vote in that lanky twat into that bizarre voodoo compound. What a strange world. Seriously, three months ago, secret camera in a women's dormitory, I'm a pervert. Now it turns out I was merely at the cutting edge of TV fashion. <laughs> but what else has been happening since I last gathered you all in this tiny room? Well, as we all know, the Queen Mother reached 100. Let's salute that. The most touching moment of the tribute, of course, was when 25 deaf children sang to her in sign language. But they were upset when the Queen Mother replied with a traditional little wave and told them all to fuck off. <laughs> but it's not all good news for the royal family, as the Liberal Democrats announced they will remove the Queen as the head of the Church of England when they get elected. Oh, I bet she's so scared. <laughs> you imagine, start on the phone to Kennedy. Yeah, when you get elected, baldy ginger, you can promise what you want. You ain't getting in your slag. <laughs> Which is how she talks. But, <laughs> naturally, since we've been away, the Dome's fortunes have slumped again. I say, don't scrap it. Build another one, divert the Thames, and make a nice big smiley face for the start of EastEnders. <laughs> And I'm pleased to see in our absence that you've all become so erudite. Yesterday, a list of our favourite words was published. The winner was serendipity, closely followed by the words what, then does, that and mean. <laughs> the final words on the list were fuck, home, Jesus and money, which, interestingly, is an entire sentence at half past three in the morning. Fuck, home, oh, Jesus, money! <laughs> but the biggest news is, apart from my cock extension, I have a fantastic new co-presenter. I'm delighted to be joined by Sarah Alexander. <laughs> Thank you, Ian, for welcoming me into your glittering topical world. Yep, whatever. <laughs> Meanwhile, at the Olympics, Princess Anne has been touched twice by different Australians. Sources say if she's touched once more, she may have an orgasm. <laughs> and in fact, photo evidence suggests she may have been asking for it. <laughs> Hello. Hello there. Oh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sarah. Yeah. This is your desk. This is where you'll be working from now on. OK, so get used to it. Excellent. Thank you, Ian. Um, where do I get my pens? Right. Well, there's a cupboard back there and right. there's tea and coffee just around there. Just don't touch me mug, whatever you do, or a puncher. OK. <laughs> Good one. Good one. Uh, what are you fingering? Oh, well, this is the book by Patrick Jeffson about Princess Diana, which he claims is a sympathetic portrayal treating her life with sensitivity and respect. I've got to say, I can't really see what all the fuss is about it. <laughs> Ian, sorry, I I'm afraid we're going to have to pause the show roller coaster for a moment. For legal reasons, we have to make an apology. We would like to apologise to Minnie Driver, currently shooting a new Mel Smith flick, for saying that she has a face like a main course at a Nouvelle Cuisine restaurant, <laughs> with her features as tiny helpings in the middle of a circular expanse of flesh. <laughs> Minnie, you can't help how you look, but you can help being in so many films where we have to suffer your medieval picture of the sun-like head. <laughs> What's coming up on tonight's show? Go on. <laughs> OK, so we've got a uh, keen social observation from our style gurus, a revelation about Gary Bushell that'll shock the nation, and Lauren Booth will be here to tell us if it's all over for Tony Blair. But before we move on, Sarah, I've just heard that following the conviction of that nun for cruelty to children, there's to be a remake of The Sound of Music, where seven children escape from a convent into the welcome arms of the Nazi party. <laughs> Although, be fair, Ian, four of her charges were dropped, then thrown, then kicked across a room into the radiator. <laughs> <laughs> Time now to join our very own version of Tony Parsons. Two men who will, whether you want them to or not, tell you what's hot and what isn't. It's the Style Wankers. We're the Style Wankers. And our nad bags are full to bursting with top Style Gents goo. We've got our finger on the cock of style. <laughs> Robert, what are you going to be bollocking on about today? Urban movement! 
You massive wanker. In the 70s, the quickest way to get from tube to office was the skateboard. Then in the 80s, the rollerblade ruled the roost, but the dream went sour and it all ended in a blizzard of cocaine. For much of the 90s, people lost confidence in wheels and had to rely on walking a bit more quickly. But for the new millennium came whole yoghurt pots full of gentlemen's yoghurt. Ladies and gentlemen, the stainless steel wank scooter. Everything about it, from its tiny wheels to its handlebars, which are much too low, seems to scream, Tusser! And you'll even look at Tusser when you're carrying one about. People will look at you and think, he's got one of those wank scooters. What a twat! And that's got to be good news. Let's roll! Hi, I'm 36 years old. What do you think of my scooter? I think it looks great. 36 is the new 26, according to Julie Birchall. Opinion? How wanky on a scale of 1 to 10 would you say they are? Well, yes. Yeah. 50. 50? <laughs> Is it complete jizz or like massive toss? Massive toss. <laughs> like to have a go on it. Oh, no, 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 My hands are sore enough as it is for making. <laughs> but they're already out of date. I liked them first before anyone else. You tosser! Yes, yes, I am a tosser. But if you really want to look like a child when going to work, there can only be one option. The go-kart! Go your dad's helped you make it with an old plan found in the canal. Now you can drive it round Soho looking like a massive <laughs> Who beat losers? We're on Channel 4! Get a door for us, mate. Cheers, mate. Hello, have you got a table for two and a go-kart? Yeah, you've got a go-kart. Sorry. We can't take it in. But these are like the latest hip thing in Soho, aren't they? Well, the thing is, we're, we're meeting Julie Birchall later, and she's arriving on a children's tractor. Yeah. The fashion go-kart, <laughs> horse, blonde, dirt, wank, as they say in Soho. Tony, you're shooting with both nads. Ta. <laughs> Next week on Style Wankers. Sherbet Dib Dabs. They're back. They've come full circle. You tosser! No, you are, you mean. Ta. Another report from the Star Wankers next week, but now let's check out one of our brand new services. <laughs> yeah, with the Lib Dem talk of gay marriages, it seems that at last politicians have realised there are millions of floating gay voters. Let's check out the gay credentials of the main parties on our swingometer. Ian, can you take us through the Tories? With great pleasure, yes. The Tories are traditionally a very straight party with only a soft underbelly of gayness. Let's take a closer look. William Haig used to drink 14 pints a day. Kids, you can't get straighter than that. <laughs> But he's given all that up to become a fitness fanatic. Quite gay. Mm. However, he wrestles every day. However, he wrestles every day, which is quite straight. Yeah, I'll stop you there, Sarah, because all it's right. with Seb Co, which makes it very, very gay. <laughs> At the moment, the Tories are riding high on the polls, which is very straight. Overall, then, they're straddling the thin pink line of bisexuality, or Michael Portillo, as he's known to us. <laughs> And now, our tribute to a woman who's older than Bolshevism, but not as left-wing at all. We present the Queen Mother, 100 years in two minutes. There are many names for this marvellous woman. The Queen Mother, the Queen Mum, Old Blue Blood Prune Face, and she's given the nation a whole century of selfless service. Her dedication to watching horse racing on our behalf, her tireless refusal to pay income tax, and her ability to have a £3 million overdraft just to show we mortals that it can be done. So we present things you didn't know about the most glorious woman in the known world. First of all, she's famous for her hats. Always colourful, always covered in flowers. But did you know she had them grown for her by a specially trained dwarf gardener? It's also little known that she has been a keen sportswoman throughout her life. Here she is winning the Oxford and Cambridge boat race by using every man in Botswana as her crew. Here she is winning the marathon in the 1932 Olympics, taking advantage of the age-old royal prerogative of using the car. But behind this sporting facade lies a deeper, darker side. For years she had a reputation as a tyrant, insisting, for example, that a young Patrick Moore walk in front of her at all times. And just watch what she does to these heads of the Commonwealth. Ah, ah, she didn't say, Simon says, sit down. Finally, she went too far when it was discovered that she was keeping the entire population of Northampton as pets. In 1952, her husband, George VI, or, as he was more popularly known, King Dad, died and then became King Dead. She tried to move into fashion design for a while with her range of hedgehog sleeve dresses, later getting a job as a cleaner. 
but she achieved most success with her acting career, taking the part of Porthos in The Three Musketeers. Recent years have seen her looking to the future, auditioning replacement queen mums for when she croaks. But still, she works tirelessly for the nation. Here she is only last week in Sierra Leone, joining 20 members of the SAS in deep camouflage to take on the West Side boys. Cheers, Mom. The bar's this way. And that's why it's called him. I don't know. It's world. <laughs> More history next week. OK, let's have a quick look at the day's winners and losers. Good news. Scientists have launched equipment which can detect incoming asteroids up to a year in advance. Bad news, they should have launched it a year ago. <laughs> That's bad news for everyone. We're all set to be destroyed by a massive asteroid. But good news for the BBC. We're already working on the BAFTA-winning Walking with Humans. <laughs> bad news for Reggie Cray, who's fighting for his life. Good news for one lucky ambulance man who can now truthfully claim I put Reggie Cray in hospital. <laughs> Good news for gays, as the Lib Dems allow them to marry. Bad news, nag, 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 nag. <laughs> Coming up in part two, new statesman columnist Lauren Booth tells us what's really been going on Downing Street. William Hague loses his trousers. And something you never knew about cuddly son journo Gary Bushell. Before we go, a teaser to keep you sharp. Who is this little-known East End bad boy? We'll tell you after the break. Stay with us. Before the break, we asked, who is this little-known East End bad boy? Please put me out of my misery, Sarah. Ian, it is, of course, Channel 5's Boyard. Master of the fort from Fort Boyard. I know that would have been nagging you all week. <laughs> Headline news now, and John Prescott has backed Railtrack in their decision to implement the slightly cheaper of the automatic safety systems, known as MISTFO, or mattress strapped to front of engine. <laughs> Olympic swimmer removes goggles. Vacuum sucks out eyeballs. <laughs> The Royal Academy's exhibition showing a 15-minute hardcore porn film has been attacked by Mary Whitehouse. 15 minutes of filth, she said. I only reached the plateau stage of my orgasm. <laughs> a cyclist has won our first gold in Sydney. Unfortunately, we didn't have the same luck in the swimming. The bike sank. <laughs> the Pope has signalled a change in his attitude to condoms. He now prefers a rouser. Hmm. <laughs> Geneticists grow a bit of face in Petri dish. <laughs> the Church of England has announced plans to install hole-in-the-wall dispensers in thousands of rural churches, so now you can shout, Jesus Christ, is that all I've got? And actually get an answer. <laughs> DJs in Wales, who joked about petrol shortages, caused panic as terrified Welsh people tried to work out how the magic box in the corner was able to speak. <laughs> Another gold medal for Britain, this time in double trap shooting. Richard Folds is now Britain's best trap shooter since gypsy lover Tony Martin. <laughs> Ian, let's see who's been telling porkies this week. Yeah, good idea. Racing revelations have left Gordon Brown with less credibility than Damon Hill's guide to better loving. Back in 1997, <laughs> Formula One boss Bernie Eccleston gave the Labour Party £1 million. Curiously enough, shortly after that, the government sought an exemption for Formula One from a European tobacco ban. Gordon Brown told Radio 4 he knew nothing of the donation, then admitted, if this gets out, I'll be destroyed. So we asked the question, who's been telling porkies? <laughs> so, with the recent polls, politics is looking rosier for William Hague, and he's now able to abandon his spin-off singing career. Let's have a look at what we're going to miss. William, look at your popularity ratings. They're through the roof. Well, that's terrific, Mike. But I've got something to push them sky high. Hello, kids. Bill Hague here. <laughs> Ever wondered about who to vote for? Well, here's something that might help you to making your mind up. Uh, making your minds up. Uh, make, make your mind up. Play the thing, will you? Get off this day. You've got to speed it up. And then you've got to slow it down. Because if you believe that a love can hit the top, you've got to play around. And so you will find that there comes a time for making your mind up. It's working. Oh, yeah, wait till you see this. Try to look as if you don't care less. But if you want to see some more. <laughs> disgusting. I can't believe it. What went wrong? Oh, yes, here are those vote for me underpants you wanted for your routine. You what? 
Well, what the bloody hell am I wearing? Also, your wife just rang and asked if you'd seen her sexy leopard skin thong anywhere. I knew I shouldn't have got dressed this morning with my eyes closed. But when they're not singing, what are they doing? Let's get the inside story on the political world. Please welcome Lauren Booth. Take a seat. Thank you very much for coming along. Now, Tony Blair has been accused alongside Gordon Brown of telling porky pies over Bernie Eccleston's million pounds. Why has this story come out now? What's happened? Well, another journalist has found out that it's very good to serialise your um, ideas and some gossip in the uh, mail for a quarter of a million. Uh, but Andrew Rawnsley is fairly well connected. Mm. But it's certainly not with number 11. I mean, all of this is... Coming from somewhere, probably not too far from number ten. What, number nine? What? <laughs> <laughs> now, Haig is obviously loving all of this. How much can he benefit from this crazy scandal? Well, he'll only benefit as long as we can all bear seeing him on TV and hearing his nasal whine. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've already had enough of uh, his awful voice that sounds like some sort of 60s presenter. And Portillo sweating and the whole bottom lip thing. I don't think it will serve him too well. Bottom lip, is that a euphemism? Is that another... Is no, that like, is that like you know... <laughs> I'm going skiing today. He's yeah, you know what that means. He just looks overly, overly ripe in the mouth area. Now, the, the big news this week, of course, has been the petrol crisis. I bought a car two days before it started. I've driven it twice. That's a different story. You really did break down as yeah. well, didn't you? Yeah, I did I had break. a laugh about that. Well, I had, what do you mean you had a laugh about it? We broke down in the pouring we... rain. This girl... No one would stop they thought it was a stunt. They thought I had secret cameras somewhere. Yeah. This girl phoning her mate up going, it's the bloke off the telly, he's broken down. <laughs> I told her to piss off. Um, <laughs> but you walked home. I did, I did walk home. Uh, now, anyway, how has Tony Blair handled the petrol crisis? Well, he looked really grim the first couple of days. He was swaying and pale and making rather panicky announcements. But I think by Wednesday what had happened is that the government had realised that later in the week the press would take care of it for them and encourage people to stop stockpiling petrol and stop panicking because otherwise their papers wouldn't get delivered. So it was a big change midweek where everything, everybody was told, pack up now, you've had your fun. You need, you need your uh, weekend newspapers, pull yourself together. So he didn't have to do much more. Mm. Now, I've, I've got a list here. It's a list of emergency services um, who got priority fuel during the crisis. And, um, uh, well, actually, in fact, everyone here except lorry drivers, farmers and cabbies. <laughs> Even presenters for the BBC are on there and broadcasters. Are they? Yeah. So someone like Jeremy but not fucking you. Spake if you could have got is getting <laughs> petrol while I was stuck in the rain for two hours on the Archway Road. Spake, you're a dead man. <laughs> How do you think Blair's going to regain his popularity? Do you think he's going to say something nice about Paulie Yates? Uh, well, that's, that's always proved popular in the past, you know. We've had the Queen of Hearts when she died. There was, the big, there was a lot of tears and everybody thought, what a great guy, much better than the Queen. And, you know, when the Queen of Tarts died, you can't help thinking that perhaps they should do something else. But I think it's a bit more serious this time. I think the PM next week may need a complete Tom Jones makeover. <laughs> a pair of leather trousers and uh, a single released with Robbie Williams will probably be the only answer at the moment. And there's him and Lauren Booth. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Coming up this weekend's essential guide for any music lovers, let's welcome John Holmes and his gig guide. <laughs> ah, well, then, like, very much like the News of the World's easily misunderstood campaign to get the public to finger a criminal, so we now slip the tip of a moistened digit into this week's 11 o'clock show gig guy in a half-hearted attempt to tease out and bring off some music listings. <laughs> First out of the band Kebab this week. Nazi race-hate pop tribute band SS Club 7 reach not for the stars but for their machine pistols this weekend as they headline the Chelmsford Genocide Festival. That's on Saturday <laughs> afternoon in a field. Next up, indie trance outfit Sarah's Lawn, the band named after a confusing mixture of the possibility of controlled access to the sex offenders register and an area of nicely mown turf, are playing at Southampton's Ainsley Harriet Centre. Music <laughs> begins at 7.30 with a violent confrontation with the gents at 9. <laughs> On Saturday, Toxic Rock Syndrome, the band famed for starting a new song before they finish the old one, thereby causing a potential fatal reaction, will bring their own peculiar brand of gothic swing to the fetid lump hammer in Scrape. I can tell you they're worth seeing because the drummer used to be the guitarist in Westlife. Take stout shoes because the carpet there is made of boiling lava. Also on Saturday, Big Brother Hood of Man, a 70 Eurovision tribute band made up of all the inmates of the Big Brother house trying to cash in on their newfound Z-list fame, 
We'll be in the back bar of the microscooter in Concord disaster. <laughs> That's the pub in Camden, named after just two of the things they missed. Starts at eight, bring a gun. And finally, <laughs> on Sunday, hardcore tea dance trio, insufferable ranting bitch, named after the women who live on the Paulsgrove estate in Portsmouth, will be showcasing their new single, Dubious Talent, at the quarter wound in Lemsip. <laughs> Bring your own beer as they're only licensed to serve an incomprehensible mixture of earwax and gypsies piss. That's it. <laughs> if you want the ill-thought-out group of friends you call a band in next week's guide, then simply tattoo the details onto the rancid back of a tramp and send them to me, John Holmes, 11 o'clock show, television. And remember, we can't return any of your pictures because we burn them and stuff them flaming into the helpless, gaping mouth of a weeping Tony Hart. <laughs> Thanks, John. Now, for our very first scoop of the series. You may know him as the big-bearded Nancy hater. Yes, we're talking about Gary Bushell, fiercely heterosexual Sun TV journalist. Here's something about Gary you don't know. Saturday morning on the River Trent. Over the next two days, over 5,000 gay, lesbian, bisexual and transgender men and women will gather here for Nottingham Pride 2000. And if some aspects of this festival shock the more traditional members of this historical town, it's just something they'll have to get used to. I'm too sexy for my shirt. Too sexy for my shirt. So sexy it hurts. And I... It's a world with an insatiable appetite for icons from classics like Judy Garland to more recent editions like David Beckham. This autumn, however, has seen the gay community choose a totem that no one could have expected. <laughs> Sorry, can I just ask you, who is that on your T-shirt? Gary Bushell. What, the Sun TV reviewer? That's the one. He's not exactly renowned for his support of the gay community, is he? There we go. Bizarre, perhaps, but by no means a one-off. Excuse me, sorry to interrupt you. Can I just ask, uh, why the Gary Bushell masks? Well, Gary Bushell has become quite a gay icon now. We're sick of those little, little slim, skinny things. We want something with a bit of meat on them. So you're not worried that Gary can be homophobic in his column and so on? Well, I'm sure we can find some way of shutting his mouth up. Shouldn't we be fancy like, you know, boy bands or David Beckham? Why? What is it about him? It's that, it's that beard. It's just overgrown. It's like a jungle. Oh, I mean, it's a style. I mean, just have the restraint to what we sleeve, just above the wrist. I think it's disgusting. I think it's raw. I don't, yeah. I don't see anything. I don't see why. It's just that smile. It's saying I'm a bit of a tinker, but I'm holding down a six-figure salary. Yeah, I have been naked on my bed to war. Naked? I would sleep with the man if he came up to me yes, today. Yes, he has. I've seen, I've seen the picture on his bedroom wall. I think it's wonderful the way he can multitask between being a tabloid journalist and being on through the keyhole. I want you to blow your whistles and make lots of noise and show how much you love Gary Bushell! Gary Bushell, gay icon. Flash in the pan or an icon to rival the likes of Jerry Halliwell, Kylie Minogue and Adam Rickett. Only time will tell. This is Jeremy Scott for the 11 o'clock show at Nottingham Pride. If you're a song reader, we want to know how you feel about Gary's new status. Email us on 11 o'clock show at channel4.com. And we'll be back tomorrow with a further look at the phenomenon. On tomorrow's show, War on Sport. Punditry from Charlie Whelan, plus a trip down to Gratuitous Wood. Before we leave you, a brief look at tomorrow's news. No one leading with that Bushel story just yet, but there's more on the royal arse touching with Princess Anne in the Independent admitting, I made it all up, I just crave attention. <laughs> Here's The Guardian, Haig so excited by Tory poll lead, he comes 14 pints in a day. <laughs> in the mirror, Ricky Martin is stalking an overweight American fan. I just can't get her out of my head, said the Latin stud. She's everything a millionaire pop star could want. 50, overweight and mentally ill. <laughs> it's been crazy. See you tomorrow. Good night. Bye.